So yeah, hi everyone, uh, Robert Fuller here, wildlife artist uh, doing lockdown live uh, from the Yorkshire Wells, beautiful area of Yorkshire. And today I'm going to talk about weasels and my uh, obsession with weasels. With uh, Got a little Ron in here, he's just about to go outside this week um, into an enclosure, a release enclosure. Uh, I've got a couple of weasels to swap around, we might be releasing uh, Chester so I'll let you know when that's happening uh, and he's probably going to go in there so uh, yeah quite exciting day but he's reached the stage where he's ready for the next next stage. It looks quite small when it's here but this is quite a big big enclosure for him but he's ready, definitely ready for the next uh, stage which is heading outside into a release enclosure. So yeah, I'm going to start uh, by telling you uh, where this sort of obsession started. Uh, it was five years ago I spotted a, a female weasel in the garden just out of my studio here and I always like to start a new project. So I started this new project in 2015. Since then Stokes and Weasels uh, have literally taken over my life. Everything I do, uh, nearly everything <laughs> is uh, in the garden is based around them as well as the owls uh, and the other wildlife but we're just going to show you some of the uh, footage uh, from my early days. Yes, this was um, uh, Vin Weasel who's uh, recently uh, left us and he was a fabulous little weasel. I got to a stage where I could work really close with him, that's sort of taken on a really wide angle lens so I'm less than two meters away from him and he got so used to me I could uh, film him and get these really intimate sort of images of him, uh, uh, real close-up shots of him as he travelled around our garden. So he was a fabulous little character. Uh, but he's um, he seems to have uh, gone now. He's maybe been predated or or overthrown by the bigger stoves. Uh, but there's super little things. Um, 140 grams, so we're looking at quite a small mammal, the smallest uh, carnivore in the world, the weasels, uh, it's a fabulous little thing. Yeah, so we're going to show you some other other bits, uh, some photographs and some... Uh... Should we do these bits first? Yes, yeah, so this is Weasel Town, yeah, just an introduction to Weasel Town. And this is, uh, when I spotted the weasel in the garden, I started developing all these little habitats, and these are full of cameras, streaming live in images back uh, into my studio. I would even tie a mouse, a dead mouse, onto a piece of string with a bell on it in my studio so when the female arrived uh, I would get a little ring. But these are all old logs that I'm making into um, little weasel nests uh, and this was the, the main weasel nest that I made. So it's an old uh, piece of elderberry uh, which is nice and hollow, tiny little hole in it. Uh, and this is Vin Weasel again, he's, he's popping out of... Uh, the entrance hole where you saw me uh, filming him earlier. So this is a habitat just literally outside the studio door, uh, a few metres away behind me. Um, and this is a little habitat for weasels. And that's my studio door, which is just here. I've got a hide there. I've built my little pond. Uh, yes, that's that <laughs> door there, just there, so it's very convenient. Uh, and this is just at the back of the studio. So the shoe's dashing back and forth to a nest. Uh, out there the female weasel I had in the garden with kits in so I built a wall there just to steady her, her travel down uh, but this is the root pile and in there there's a feeder uh, and this is Wendy the weasel one I rehabilitated before releasing her so there's so much uh, out there that I've built and uh, uh, all little things I've devised to film these weasels in my garden so I'll just have a look at a bit of the, the characters uh, in the garden so this is uh, a really exciting moment. It started with this female weasel. And I saw her one day, she moved the kits when they were uh, six days old into my actual nesting habitat. And then she moved them back. Uh, and this was a lovely photograph uh, as well here where she's actually just poised. She's actually looking at the male. She's just brought a mouse out of a hole and she's just frozen because the male weasel is there in the garden. And these are, you know, a special set of photographs that I won British Wildlife Photographer of the Year Four Seasons category with these pictures. So this is, uh, the first one was spring and this one is summer. Uh, I'm moving a kit at 17 days old. And this is one of those kits, uh, come the autumn, um, popping out 
have some autumn leaves. And this uh, next photograph will be my, probably my favourite photograph of uh, him, the same little char character. So this is the him now grown up in his first winter and this is him just popping out of the roots out of a little snow hole and that's probably one of my favourite photographs I've ever captured of weasels that one it's uh, you know one of those pictures I'm really really pleased with so yes we'll move on um, what we're going to move on to what we're going to talk about now what have you got I'll be talking about this little guy in here yes yeah, so we've got some footage of uh, this little guy to show you uh, and show you how sort of quick he is and how fast he sort of moves around um, but he's, he's doing really well we haven't handled him at all so he's quite um, you know he's, he's still a wild little weasel he's going to be going outside very shortly but this just gives you a little uh, a little glimpse of how stunning he is he's a wonderful little creature and super fast that's real speed you know he's uh, he zips around there when I photograph weasels uh, running and jumping over branches I've had to photograph them at four thousandth of a second and that's the same sort of shutter speed I'd use, use for a small flying bird like a sparrow uh, that's the minimum shutter speed I need to actually freeze a weasel when they're actually in full full speed so it gives you an idea of how fast they are that they're moving uh, you know their movements are almost as quick as a flying bird which is quite extraordinary for a mammal with little legs but he's just absolutely stunning lovely little pink nose and uh, yeah we're just looking forward to taking him out for his uh, next stage how much more cute footage have you got for us there will it's about a minute left i think a minute left of just <coughs> weasel footage we've got quite Could a lot of better. footage here in case he doesn't perform today but i can see him wiggling around in his sleeping bag there <coughs> yeah so we're not gonna so we'll show you a little, quick glimpse of him but we're not we haven't handled him the only times we've handled him is when he first came in and then twice more when we've showed you him uh, on camera so he's not been handled we're keeping him wild because uh, he's heading out he's heading out into the wild so he needs to uh, not be over familiar with uh, us and it's been really quite cold at night we've had some frost here so he hasn't been just quite ready for that next stage but we think he's he's ready uh, to be heading out now he's pretty well grown so uh, yes yeah, so that's him so uh, I'm going to take a few questions and uh, these are coming from Old Fleet Primary uh, hi guys they've been watching uh, a lot of our uh, lockdowns and really been enjoying it so there's a weasels class there uh, which is absolutely fabulous uh, really pleased you've been watching us and it's good to have a bit of young enthusiasm about the wildlife that's absolutely fantastic so Will's going to hit me with the questions and I'm going to do my best to answer them for you. So thanks again to the Weasel class. So these questions all come from them. So we're going to go, there's quite a few here, so we'll try and get through them. So is Ron flexible? He is unbelievably <laughs> flexible, yeah. Weasels are probably one of the most flexible mammals that there is. They can literally uh, do a U-turn, you know, they bend <laughs> in little circles and things. So yeah, incredibly flexible. Can Ron walk on walls yet? He will be able to walk on walls, yeah. Yeah, he, he would actually be able to, uh, a weasel of this age, I've got um, a material on my wall to Velcro pictures on, and uh, weasels of this, this age will be able to walk up a, a vertical wall uh, if there's a bit of grip on there. Can he climb? He can climb incredibly well, yeah. He have got branches in there, and he'll climb up these branches really easily. He was climbing up there yesterday, actually. Yeah. Can he bite lots of meat off prey? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, so he can, yeah. So when they, when weasels bite something, uh, what they do is use uh, the strength of their neck uh, and body. So they'll bite something and they actually, like crocodiles in a way, they actually twist um, the head once they've bitten. So I've been bitten by weasels before. Um, this isn't a weasel bite. This is uh, me uh, mishandling a chainsaw this morning. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, but a weasel can deliver, um, you know, quite a nasty bite. And as they bite, they actually twist their head. Uh, and I've been in the doctors uh, with a blood infection going up my arm before with a, a weasel bite. So, uh, yeah, weasels can bite and rip flesh off, yeah. Is Ron fierce? He is fierce, yeah. Yeah, he is fierce. Uh, if we try and handle him, handling him now, he would definitely bite and hiss and uh, make, a, make a fuss, yeah. So you saw some of the footage earlier. He was squeaking as we were as we were looking at yeah. him to film some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, is Ron a good swimmer? 
He hasn't had a chance to swim yet. He's got a little water bell in there, but all mammals can smell, uh, all mammals can swim, uh, and weasels and stoats are fabulous swimmers. We'll send you some weasel and stoat swimming footage, uh, and you'll be blown away by it. We just had two stoats down the uh, valley swimming the other day, and because their fur is so dense, they're quite buoyant in the water as well, so they, they do actually float quite well. Would Ron eat an orange? No, <laughs> no. So uh, they, they are carnivores and just eat meat, but I had a, a pet weasel called Fidget, and uh, he used to be in my studio, and then he would come into the house as well. He also lived outside uh, in the enclosure. Uh, but he would actually run up onto the uh, table and sometimes he would steal a slice of beef. Uh, but what he really liked was cream and ice cream, believe it or not. He would uh, do anything to run across the table. He'd actually just climb up your legs or up the table uh, and he would dash in and try and pinch some cream or ice cream. We didn't encourage it, but he was so fast we couldn't stop him. Uh, why does Ron like hiding? Why does he like hiding? Because he's a wild weasel. He's, uh, he doesn't want to be friends. You can tame them down if you get them young enough, uh, but we've kept him wild, ready for releasing into the, into the outdoors, into the wild. And you can see in the enclosure that Robert's made for uh, Ron that there's lots of things for him to hide in as well. It keeps yeah. him feeling safe when he's in there. Yeah, so he hides in the tunnels and... Uh, Um, why does he need a soft place to sleep? Oh, they like to be cosy. Um, so weasels, uh, because of their body shape, um, they, they can suffer with, uh, you know, getting cold. Uh, that's one of their main problems. If they get cold and wet, uh, that's their main problem. So they, when they sleep, they sleep in a tight little ball. Uh, but the plumper and more compact an animal is, the less heat they, they lose. So a long, thin animal has more surface area so they can lose more heat. How come he has a wooden house? <laughs> so the wooden house, that comes from uh, a friend of mine who used to have, uh, um, guinea, uh, not guinea pigs, hamsters. So uh, yeah, there's the hamsters. wooden house. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's just something to pop in with him. Um, does he have toys and why? Oh, he has toys, yeah. He wrestles with them and fights with them. So he's got uh, some of my kids' little toys that they donate to, to him and he, uh, he grabs them and wrestles them and uh, throws them around. Because he would normally have some siblings to play and fight with. Uh, and uh, yeah, so he, he likes other things. You see he's just bumping the toys there, zipping underneath them. One of the questions here is how fast can weasels run? Oh, pretty fast. They're probably about 20 miles an hour, I'd say. Uh, yeah, so they're pretty quick weasels. Will Ron be a wild animal? He will, yes. Yeah, so he's going to go out into the wild. We might release him in the winter if the winter is kind, but if not, he'll be going out in the early spring. Do weasels like the snow? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll a picture up for you. So uh, we had uh, some footage that we need to share with you as well, and maybe of when uh, a weasel saw snow for the first time. It's actually this weasel that we were filming, and one day it snowed and he popped bobbed out and he just dashed around and around absolutely loving it. Uh, he didn't know what to do with himself so he was running in and out of uh, uh, the little habitat that I built for him. Um, and the final question from the weasels class um, is does Ron ever sneak out? He hasn't snuck out yet. Um, when I had Fidget in here he once got underneath the floor floorboards uh, and that was interesting, trying to coax him back out from underneath the floorboards. Uh, and occasionally he would get out of my studio uh, and he'd go into the gallery, down the framing shed, into the packing room, back into the house. Uh, so they're very flexible and can fit through any little gaps. Um, a female weasel uh, will fit through like um, just a bit bigger than my wedding ring. So uh, quite a small space. 22 millimetres uh, is the... Uh, size that I've seen a female weasel go through. So that's all of the questions from the uh, Old Fleet Weasels. So thank you again for all your questions, yeah, uh, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. And mm -hmm. um, we have a few more questions from our other viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer Comerford on YouTube asks, how many babies do weasels usually have? Oh, so weasels, they can have um, reasonably sized uh, litters. So uh, uh, the weasel you're looking at there, he was one of seven uh, baby kits. 
which is quite a good size litter for weasels. Uh, stoats can have, have more, uh, but yeah, about seven's a fairly good number. Um, somebody's asking whether weasels are good pets. Um, yeah, they, they, they can actually make good pets, but at the end of the day, they're a wild animal. I have kept uh, a couple of weasels as pets over the years. Um, but this guy's destined uh, for life in the wild. You know, they're a little bit like keeping a ferret, the ferret uh, only, uh, only smaller. Well, I'm just going to check with Sam if we've got any more questions. But I think we may be coming to the end. Uh, we've got another one here. How is Ron doing, given he has no family or playmate to learn from? <laughs> yes, that's always the difficult thing with uh, when you get one weasel in. Quite often in the, in the spring and summer, when we get weasels handed in, we usually manage to pair them up, uh, whether it's here with me or with other people. So you can end up with uh, more than one weasel together, a young weasel, and that's ideal because they fight and play, you know, like the stoats have been doing before we release those. Uh, so that's the ideal opportunity that we end up with a playmate. But uh, yeah, so that's the end of uh, the questions and the end of Lockdown Live. We will be bringing you live um, events, any uh, ideas, suggestions, we'll certainly try and uh, do them for you. Yeah, so uh, thanks again for watching and take care everyone.